Hello all of you wonderful people, Jules here for WhatCulture.com and if there is one thing that I love more than anything, it is a good superhero because not only do they fight for our right to be, well, alive in most cases, but they also do so with such clattering, overpowered punches that it makes you feel it even reading it on the page. But unfortunately, the tables can and have been turned every once in a while and even Earth's mightiest heroes can be, well, put out to passion with just a single punch. So let's take a look at these embarrassing moments and actually go, damn, that was pretty heavy handed. Haha, uh -huh, pun intended. As I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 comic book heroes taken down in just one hit. Number 10, Guy Gardner. Following the events of DC's classic Crisis on Infinite Earths, the former Justice League of America expands its membership to include heroes from around the world, becoming Justice League International. One of the new members is Guy Gardner, Earth's second Green Lantern, who has been recruited into the Green Lantern Corps during the Crisis. Gardner, who is arrogant and overconfident about his new abilities, almost immediately alienates his teammates and regularly clashes with Batman, the League's leader at the time. The simmering tension between the two boils over in Justice League International No. 5, where Gardner challenges Batman to a fight for leadership of the team. Batman responds by, well, knocking out Gardner with just one punch and then leaves the room, leaving Guy in the care of their delighted teammates. But don't feel too bad for poor Guy though, because in a future timeline he scores his own one-punch knockout on an unfortunate alien known as Balfuga the Unrelenting. Number 9. The Thing the decades-long rivalry between The Incredible Hulk and Fantastic Four member Ben Grimm, better known as The Thing, is one of the most well-known rivalries in comics. The pair have done battle many, many times over, usually with an inconclusive victor. However, at least one confrontation left The Thing clearly worse off. In Fantastic Four number 167, Hulk is in the custody of the Four, who are hoping to cure him and restore Bruce Banner. The Thing is left guarding the Hulk, but weirdly helps him escape after the gamma radiation leaking from from the Hulk's prison disorientates him. Fearing the radiation could kill the Thing, the Fantastic Four pursue the pair, and they arrive to see the Thing almost killed by the Hulk. Because unfortunately, just as the radiation is reverting Ben to his human form, the Incredible Hulk lands an almighty, brutal punch. Ben would have certainly been killed if Fantastic Four teammate Johnny Storm hadn't stepped in to rescue him. Number 8. Falcon In the 2016 Thanos solo series, the Mad Titan is dying of a mistake mysterious terminal illness, travelling the universe in search of a cure. The villain's quest eventually leads him to an ancient and powerful place known as the God Quarry. The witches of Infinity who control the quarry offer Thanos a potential future where he becomes a hero, fighting alongside his former enemies the Avengers for the good of the universe. This future is supposedly Thanos' best hope at finding peace, but unfortunately for the witches and a team of Avengers who happen to be present, the Mad Titan rejects this vision. To cement his decision, Thanos brutally crushes the head of Sam Wilson, aka Falcon, between his hands. We've always known that Thanos was a monster and has likely killed millions over the course of his time in the comics, but the murder of Falcon is easily one of the most brutal killings he's ever committed. It ensures that we never forget why he is called the Mad Titan. Number 7. Superman Superman is one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful, superheroes in existence. Although the Man of Steel can be severely weakened by kryptonite, this rarely results in a quick defeat. However, Superman is also vulnerable to magic, and in a crossover event with Masters of the Universe, during the DC's New 52 era, the hero meets his match in the form of He-Man. During the crossover, Skeletor manages to take control of Superman using magic, forcing him into a fight against He-Man. To the surprise of everyone involved, He-Man takes Superman down with just one stab from the magical power sword. Though He-Man is briefly on the hook for murder, Superman is, of course, not actually dead. He-Man eventually manages to rescue Superman from Skeletor's control, helping him return home in the process. Number 6. War Machine Early in Civil War II, the heroes have some decidedly minor disagreements over how they should handle the mysterious precognitive abilities of Ulysses, the newest member of the Inhumans. Unfortunately, everything changes when, following one of Ulysses' premonitions, Captain Marvel leads the Ultimates into battle to intercept Thanos' attempts to steal the Cosmic Cube. James Rhodes, aka War Machine, takes part in the ensuing battle. Unfortunately, well, he's no match for Thanos, who kills Rhodes instantly with a single punch that tears through his 
his armor. Thanos is defeated, but Rhodey can't be saved. Both Carol Danvers and Tony Stark are devastated by his death. Earlier in the story, Tony had refused to upgrade Rhodey's outdated armor because he couldn't afford it. Overcome with grief and guilt at the loss of his friend, Tony declares that the powers of Ulysses are too dangerous. However, because Thanos was still stopped, Carol believes that Rhodey would want them to continue using Ulysses. While things do not completely blow up until a lot later, War Machine's one-shot death is the beginning of this simmering tension between Tony and Carol that drives the central conflict of Civil War II. Number 5. Karnak While Marvel's Inhumans are good guys, for the most part, their loyalty to their own kind and their homeland above the rest of the world occasionally sets them at odds with the wider stable of Marvel heroes. When these clashes occur, Karnak, an Inhuman who possesses the ability to see the weakness of any opponent he comes across, is particularly a notable threat. Unless he is taken out quickly, he can usually get the better of whoever he is fighting. However, Karnak has never really posed a problem for King T'Challa, the Black Panther. In 1967's Fantastic Four and Annual number 5, Black Panther clashes with the Inhumans, during which he eliminates Karnak from the fight with just one well-timed punch. Many years later, the pair meet again when T'Challa and his new wife Storm embark on a royal visit to the Inhumans' home country. Remembering their earlier altercation, Karnak attempts to size T'Challa up, but before he can make a move, he knocks him out with a knee to the head. Nobody messes with the Black Panther. Number 4. Namor Namor the Submariner, the King of Atlantis and one of Marvel's oldest and most loved heroes, is not somebody to be trifled with. Like the Inhumans, he places the well-being of his own people above all others. However, he tends to be more sensitive than the Inhumans on matters that could endanger his people. For this reason, Namor is often at odds with the Avengers so they try and stay out of each other's way wherever possible. However, one Avenger who isn't afraid of Namor is Thor. In 1978's Invaders No. 33, Namor confronts Thor after the God of Thunder has been been tricked into allying himself with a group of Nazis. Uh-oh, yikes indeed! To the horror of Namor's invader teammates, Thor ends the fight with a single punch. While Namor recovers much faster than many of the other entries on this list, the loss was still a deep blow to the King of Atlantis's ego. Number 3. Damian Wayne Damian Wayne, the son of Batman and Talia al Ghul, and the fifth character to take up the mantle of Robin, is a force to be reckoned with. Genetically engineered into an almost perfect being and raised among the League of Assassins, Damian is extremely skilled in combat. However, Damian also has an unfortunate tendency towards arrogance, which often gets the young hero into trouble. Damian eventually strikes up a friendship slash rivalry with Jonathan Kent, aka Superboy. In one story, the pair are in the custody of the Titans for safety reasons. Starfire informs the boys that they must be rendered unconscious to keep their former titan Raven from tracking them. Damien angrily refuses and is angered further when Starfire speaks over his refusals in order to ask Superboy his opinion on the matter. At this point, Superboy punches out Damien himself and gives the titans coordinates to Superman's Fortress of Solitude so that they know where to go once he is unconscious. Damien is understandably a little bit pissed off about the incident, but the friendship between the two young heroes eventually recovers. Number 2. Hal Jordan Hal Jordan, the second Green Lantern and likely the most well-known character to have carried the mantle, has a long and complicated history in DC Comics, having been both portrayed as a hero and villain at various points. And like his successor, Guy Gardner, Hal is no stranger to getting his butt whooped due to his overconfidence. After the whole DC Universe was rebooted into the new 52, Hal Jordan is reverted from a seasoned professional back into a cocky rookie who only recently joined the Green Lantern Corps and, subsequently, the Justice League. Going against the advice of his new Justice League teammates, Hal sets off alone to take on Darkseid, well known as one of DC's most dangerous villains ever, even after the reboot. Darkseid dispatches the Green Lantern in a single blow, very nearly ending his life. It's quite humiliating. However, unlike Guy, who continued to just be a little bit insufferable after his beatdown by Batman, Hal is completely humbled by his defeat, and uses what he learned from his experience when he becomes a mentor to fellow Lantern Jessica Cruz. And number one, Ultimate Wolf. Wolverine. As iconic as the rivalry between the Incredible Hulk and The Thing is, the rivalry between the Hulk and Wolverine is even more well known, beginning right from the beloved mutant's first appearance in The Incredible Hulk number 181. Since their first encounter, they have had many memorable battles, although as with the Hulk's battles with The Thing, there is rarely a definitive victor. However, the pair has had at least one fight with a very clear winner. In Marvel Comics' Ultimate Universe, Wolverine is recruited by Ultimate Nick Fury to assassinate the Hulk 
Wolverine agrees to the mission, but unfortunately, uh, things don't go too well for him at all. As soon as Wolverine confronts his target, the Hulk brutally rips him in two. To make matters worse, he then rips his head off and eats his legs. Anyone else would have certainly been killed, but Wolverine's advanced healing allows him to survive the attack. Wolverine gathers up some new weapons and prepares for round two, but Nick Fury informs him that the assassination order on the Hulk has been called off, which uh, probably is a good thing considering what went down the first time around. And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 comic book heroes taken down in just one hit. I hope you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. If you want to chat to me further, you can do so over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice. It's my personal gaming channel. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye.